Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. And it is a great pleasure and honor to be here today in ISHRAC-T to present the findings of uh, my research team on a research award. Uh, I'm Dr. Santinos Kalomenos from University of Birmingham and I'm Assistant Professor of Structural Engineering. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the contribution of uh, my research team, Panagiotis Mario Stathis, MSc student from the Hellenic Open University in Greece, Valerie Shurkin, uh, PhD student from University of Birmingham, Rory Nichols and uh, Siaroi Chu, MSc graduates from the University of Birmingham. Also, we have a partners in this uh, project period, Professor Xu Chan Lin from the Institute of Engineering Mechanics, China Earthquake Administration, Hubbin, and uh, the research team of the Institute of Engineering Seismology and Earthquake Engineering, Earthquake Planning and Protection Organization of Greece, Itzak Epo, Dr. Theodulidis, Dr. Lekidis, and Dr. Mofidis. I would like also to thank the funder, EFIT, the team, Earthquake Engineering Field Investigation team that offered me the opportunity to work in this um, award. Earthquakes, compared to other uh, natural disasters, we all know that are the, cause the most fatalities and uh, extensive economic damages. Severity is further exacerbated by urbanization, especially in high seismic regions. So understanding the seismic building performance and developing emergency response measures become paramount for urban resilience. What we define as urban resilience is the ability of a system to respond and recover from a disaster. Resilience, as we see in this figure, is uh, inversely proportional to vulnerability, uh, as visualized by the area uh, above this um, line, where we call resilience curve. And uh, reducing vulnerability to this end takes basically two forms. Prevention, which means reduce reduction of the instantaneous functionality drop, and recovery, which means reduction the return period to pre-disaster functionality. In this work, we are introducing a new disaster simulation platform for the quantification of the instantaneous functionality drop at a city scale in order to establish in the future a resilience curve for the studied urban area. Why this is important, we all remember the uh, devastating events of, earthquake, of earthquakes in Christchurch that completely changed the face of the city. Many buildings were demolished and uh, collapsed during the earthquake. Also the recent event in Syria, Turkey, uh, where many buildings collapsed and also make very difficult the access to uh, areas where people were injured and they required first aids. Before I introduce the platform and the results for Thessaloniki, I would like to highlight the importance through an example. An example in China, the Long Yushan town that suffered from the 2014 Ludian earthquake and uh, we are, were able to develop the resilience curve based on real data, just the data provided by the government. Uh, the event was uh, hit the play the region at August to 3rd of August 2014. It affected more than one million people, and uh, the direct economic losses are nearly to 80 million uh, pounds. This is the city before from the satellite view after the earthquake, with further demolitions here and what this city is shown today. And here we can see uh, the resilience curve based on the data that I mentioned before. The instantaneous drop, more than 60% of the area of the buildings were damaged. They were further decreased, um, increased sort of drop through the demolitions. And then based on the recovery rate provided by the colleagues in China, we also uh, evaluate the uh, period of uh, complete recovery, which took about three years. So our goal here is through the simulation platform to develop these resilient curves for uh, real cities, for cities before hit by an earthquake so that we can establish the required response measures. So let's discuss about the development of the city-wide model. As I said in the beginning, this uh, refers to Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki is a city in Northern Greece. You can see here, uh, it was uh, hit by an earthquake in 1978 at the 20th of June at night. It was a magnitude of 6.5 and PGA 0.15. And uh, 40 people almost died, 220 were injured, and many other thousands were left homeless. Uh, Saloniki mainly has concrete buildings in the center. We are looking in the metropolitan area, 
were based on the work of Penelis et al. The majority of the buildings there were damaged, heavily damaged, and also we have some collapse cases. How now the, oh, the platform works? Overall here we can see in this slide all the modules of the platform. Originally we identified the region, the regional buildings. We um, use the GIS database to extract the polygon of, a, of its building, the roof floor plan. And uh, by implementing other information like building height, number of stories and structural type, we are able to create a 3D geometry information uh, database based on which we establish the mechanical parameters of every story. We generate a multi-shear spring model with the shear force deformation, the force displacement deformation relationship at every story. And this relationship is based on the seismic design codes of the region based on the structural type, the construction period uh, that these uh, buildings were um, fabricated, uh, constructed. And uh, the um, platform is called the U-Simulator. It uh, analyzes the building in a time history domain and uh, it specifies the damage edicts at every building based on the seismic analysis. And we have also a visualization module where we can see the damage distribution across the area and identify the most critical areas in the city and accordingly act. We collaborate with the CRICO partners, the institution, the Institute of uh, Engineering, Seismology and Earthquake Engineering. And uh, we receive from them the ground motions at the region and also a GIS uh, file with the polygon building data. And uh, we also use the inventory of buildings characteristics uh, database from the Hellenic Statistical Authority, ELSTAT 2022 for the Thessaloniki municipality in order to extract information about the building characteristics, construction year, height, floor type. Um, all the block identification data were compatible with ArcMap because it's a software that compiles with our platform. And also we use uh, Google Maps and also we did some site visits in Thessaloniki uh, to visually validate and update the database. This is how the input file look like, looks like in the U Simulator platform. Uh, we can insert the total number of buildings using automatically using a Python script. And uh, every building has an ID with each information, construction year, if we use any scale factor for the ground motion, the design characteristics, and the coordinates of the polygon. And uh, moving a little bit about the typologies, the different building typologies and the associated seismic design codes in Greece. We need to establish, as I said, for the multi shear spring model, a trilinear curve for each body individually, where we define the strength and ductility at the nominal yield, peak strength, and collapse points. So the categorization of the buildings in Greece in terms of structural systems is shown in this table in the first line. We have mainly concrete frames and basically three category categories, regular in film, moment resisting frames, irregular in field pile with pilotis, and regular in field dual systems that in MRFs and shear walls. The year of constructions for the Greek uh, cities, for the Greece generally, are basically uh, four based on the seismic design uh, developments of the country. So for buildings before 1959, there is no seismic code, so they fall in the category pre-code or no code. For the period 1959-1985, we have the royal degree where we specify for the first time the seismic design forces based on the seismic coefficient multiplied by the mass. And this is uh, the low code buildings. The period the next 85 to 95, it is the moderate code period for addition, where additional seismic clauses uh, regulations that improve the seismic code of 1959 are introduced. That basically doesn't change, don't change the base year, but basically change the ductility requirements for the members with capacity rules and uh, design of reinforcing bars and uh, anchoring of the details of the bars that provide that offer us an additional ductility in the members. And finally, 95 till now, we have the high code buildings that uh, where they fall in the very classical way of specif specifying the base year response spectrum analysis. We have three periods. We have the NEAC 95 2000, EAC, which is the Greek code 2000 
2008, and the Euro code that was introduced to Greece to 2008. So basically, response spectrum analysis with a Q factor equal to 3.5 for these buildings. And uh, the next step after we specify the base shear for each building individually is to determine the overstrength factor. Overstrength factor uh, is amplification of the base shear due to the uh, characteristics of the design and uh, the special uh, regulations that each code provides. And we advised uh, uh, references here uh, the work of Kapos that has done substantial work on this uh, research topic about uh, Greek buildings that specified the overstrength factors after performing pushover curves uh, analysis. And also uh, we advised the, the Hazus and FEMA uh, as a recent uh, modern seismic design codes that provide uh, additional information. This is the omega twist, the overstrength, which is specifies the peak shear over the yielding shear. We consider a constant value of 1.2. And the base shear at collapse point, we adopted the value of 80% of the peak BSC, base, base shear. This is about the uh, shear forces. Now we move to this part of the trilinear curve, which is the ductility. Ductilities were specified based again on Hazus and FEMA. And uh, we specify the, the drift at the peak strength and the ratio between drift collapse over drift at the peak strength. And I don't want to go much, that much in detail, just to give you an idea, a comparison for the mid-rise buildings, um, petrilinear curves that we use in the U simulator, comparison between the buildings of pre-code, low-code, moderate code, and high code, you can have an idea, lateral strength ratio, IDR in the horizontal axis, uh, how the linear curves look like for each multi shear spring model. So we can understand the different ductility and ductility strength of each building based on each design regulation. And if we look at the characteristics of the uh, buildings that we examined, we examined 1,252 buildings in the metropolitan area. The majority of them are pre code and low code category, fault of this category. So we are talking about relatively old structures, because the main activities in Thessaloniki was the construction activities were in 70s, 80s, and very few moderate and high code buildings. And the second observation is that the center of Thessaloniki consists mainly of mid-rise and high-rise buildings. So we're talking about relatively tall structures. Let's see how we validated the city-wide model. We use the database uh, provided by the researchers Pan Metal that uh, a substantial work done that period to build this database where engineers, where they inspect every building after the earthquake and they classified it to the specific damage state. We're talking about 3,707 damage buildings. Our area is here, so we use only this data to validate. And here you can see the European macro seismic scale classification for the damages. There are five distinct damage states, ranging from infill wall det detachment from the surrounding frame up to complete or partial collapse. And we uh, correspond, we associate, let's say better, these damage states with the damage index uh, calculated by the U simulator. So U simulator can specify the deformation, as I said before, in each building, can calculate the energy and uh, provide us with the damage index. And we can have these five distinct damage states of none, non -dam non -dam uh, no damage, minor, moderate, severe, and destroyed collapse. This is the equation here that calculates the damage index. One important uh, thing to notice is to notice that uh, we also consider the microzonation effect. In Thessaloniki, we have different soil conditions. When we're talking about the city simulation, we have to consider the soil structure interaction. So extensive work has been done in that period again to specify the seismic intensity at the different part of the cities. So we have three distinct zones here, area one, which is the north part of the city, area two, the middle, and area three, which is the south part. The part. So we have different intensity with higher intensity here, as we understand. And this is the equation provided by Koyopoulos, which correlates the earthquake intensity with the PGA of the ground motion. So using this equation, we can determine the PGA of the ground motion for each area and the corresponding scale factors when we do the time history analysis. 
This is the ground motion uh, histories for the, the acceleration for the X component and Y component. And the response spectrum is compared here with the design response spectrum from Eurocode. We can understand a little bit that for the range of zero to one second, which is the buildings basically that we refer to, the energy imposed is quite high, very similar to the design response spectrum. And uh, this is the, some representative results to give you an idea how the U-simulator works. The time history analysis results of each of two representative buildings, six-story building pre-code on the top, six-story building moderate code on the bottom, two different construction periods. We can see the damage, the base shear, 10% for the old buildings, 20% above for the moderate code buildings slight damage in the second building, excessive damage in the first building. And this is the validation results. We compare here the uh, 756 damage building from the engineering reports with the database that we produce. Uh, just to refer here that uh, additionally to the uh, trilinear curves that we developed, we also alter the code-based trilinear curves of each specific building to minimize the discrepancy between the simulated and collected data through inverse time history and nonlinear analysis that tends to statistically reflect the individual characteristic of each building. This is an optimization process in order to account for the differences in the construction uh, methods that are used during that period. And if we see the difference between the simulated sample and the damaged uh, area, uh, about 35-36% of the sample of the buildings, they gave us damage difference zero. And uh, nearly 60%, we have uh, a difference of plus, minus one, plus one damage state. So we can say that it was a relatively good uh, simulation of the area to at least predict the damage state, the damage uh, state of the building, of the buildings. And just a video here. where we can see the virtual representation of the response of the buildings, the time history response, structural displacement in this video, structural damage in this video. And also we have the capability to look at a three-dimensional simulation module to see which floor ex uh, experienced the higher story drift. And uh, I move now to the last part of the presentation, which is related to the city-wide damage assessment. Having now a validated model, we uh, perform a, a time history analysis with this platform for three hazard levels. We downloaded 20 ordinary far field type ground motions, the two components of each motion from peer. We are talking about soil type B here in Thessaloniki and uh, we ignore pulse records. And here you can see the three hazard zones. Uh, according to the most modern uh, Greek codes, for structural intervention from earthquake planning and protection organization, uh, we adopt two scale factors for the design basis event in order to uh, determine the, the response spectrum for the frequent event and the major event. A scale factor of 0 0.45 is provided by the code for the return period of uh, 70 years, and the scale factor of 1.8 is given from the code for the return period of 2,475 years. And uh, these figures here illustrate the damage maps for the frequent design basis and rail event uh, in the same order that I just mentioned. And uh, also I provide uh, the mean values of the damaged uh, uh, buildings, of the damaged states of each building, plus minus one standard deviation. Uh, if we look at the design basis event, it's very similar with uh, what we observe in the validation process for earthquake for the Thessaloniki earthquake, as the Thessaloniki is very close uh, to the response spectrum of design basis event. Uh, but for the plus one standard deviation, we expect some collapse cases and quite severe damages for the 10% of the buildings. And also during the earthquake in Thessaloniki, we had collapsed buildings. And uh, for the major event, there is nearly 20% of the building stonk with the worst case scenario being very devastating. It should be noted, however, that uh, building's degree of damage is attributed as the maximum damage floor, uh, which is the maximum interstory drift of, of that floor. And also the residual strength at collapse point for each building was assumed here to be equal to 0 0.8 of its peak strength. Both of these approaches are uh, quite conservative. So 
it is a conservative approach that doesn't always so so uh, severe. And if we look at the distribution of damage in the building categories, we can see that the pre-code buildings and the low-code buildings uh, experience the most severe damages. And 25% uh, of the buildings in the pre-code -pre -pre category, they may collapse. And at the end, uh, this is what is the most important uh, think that we uh, it was the, the main goal to quantify the instantaneous uh, functionality drop in our uh, city model. And uh, here we can see the result for the mean value. And having this functionality drop, uh, we are able to know the start point of our resilience curves. I'm not going to go through the detail of the uh, part after this uh, functionality drop, which is the recovery. We are working currently with uh, our team to find out the most proper way to trace this reco recovery line. But uh, speaking for the instantaneous functionality drop, we are quite confident. And here we see the three scenario with green line uh, is the frequent event, with the blue line is the design based event, and with the yellow line is the uh, rare event. We can see uh, the different um, drop in the functionality based on each uh, hazard and also we examine uh, the recovery time using different number of uh, workers of employees uh, which significantly change the return period to the pre-disaster uh, situation which is something that the authorities who should consider seriously when making such uh, design for uh, city prevention. I would like to close with some uh, important conclusions the proposed platform can provide the framework to the engineers for assessing the seismic performance of buildings quickly uh, and efficiently at the city scale. On the basis of the time history results, citywide resilience curves can be prepared to help authorities prioritizing actions that minimize severity and enable quick recovery of the situation. As expected, medium and high rise reinforced concrete buildings that were designed either without seismic codes or with old codes show the greatest vulnerability in this building category for nearly the 75% of all buildings in the city center. Analysis results are strongly affected by the microzonation effects and the associated scale factor showing a principal increase of structural damages in area three. This will be considered very seriously when we design, when we assess the behavior of all municipalities of Thessaloniki. And many buildings designed before 1959 are expected to be demolished and need to be retrofitted. This combined with the provisions of the new code in Greece, Canepe, requires strengthening of each damaged building by at least one seismic class that it was before, will significantly reduce the seismic vulnerability of the city. And last, the scenario of the rare earthquake is very likely to lead to widespread collapses in a large part of the city, mainly in area three, dividing the region into two parts, cutting off access between the western and eastern part of the city that should be considered when we develop response measures for recovery, for quick recovery of the city after a disaster. Thank you very much for your kind attention.